presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Tampa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if your listeners don't get the gold report, they're, uh, they're missing out. I mean, you, with your gold report, you just print in money. I love it. Uh, you're my best dad out there, Al. Let's go to uh, Jeff in New Jersey. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great. Uh, hey, listen, I was calling to thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were prompting on your show to fill out that uh, $10,000 uh, grant. Yes. So I filled it out, and um, just a couple days ago, I found $1,000 in my business checking account. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I owe it to you, because it, uh, if it wasn't for your prompting, I, I would have just assumed, you know, no way I would have gotten anything. So I, I wanted to thank you. No, we appreciate you growling a problem with us here. Now. Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. I'm joined today with Tommy O'Brien. Tommy, how are you doing? Good afternoon, Jacob. I'm doing great, man. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Uh, before we begin, we have the number. It's 1-877-927-6648. You can also send us an email at jacob at tfnn.com or tommy at tfnn.com. Uh, today, we're also going to be joined by Basil and Tim Ord. So we have quite the show for you today. Um, well, Tommy, let's, I mean, let's look at this, right? The ES completely down here. We have bond rates going up. Um, I think it's something with the 10 year up higher than it has been in the past 16 years, um, which is quite significant. Um, what's your lookout on all of this here? Boy, these yields are something else, man, right? I was going to ask you the same question. You beat me to it. <laughs> but uh, even from where I was this morning um, on the program, where we were this morning on the program, in terms of where we were on the 10-year, it looked like we might get a little bit of a reprieve of the lower price that we had seen. And I got off the program at 107.09. And just like that, man, we're at 106.19. The 10-year is above 4.8%. So a pretty startling move. 8% um, is the number for mortgages, man. I was looking at, I yeah. think, one of the articles on CNBC. I know they like their clickbait, but, you know, that number inching towards an 8% mortgage. In your generation, and, you know, I have a few years on you, more than I'd like to admit, but what, <laughs> it's, it's, what, what is the consensus? I was going to ask you, man, about these yields because 8%, the, the buying power, of course, we all know it, but would you do to the people you know that you hang out with do they talk about eight percent because what happens in that market it feels like that's a tough number on the mortgages as we know car loans etc how how do you look at that number man on yields definitely you know at least in my group of people that i hang out with um as i've gotten older you know we've we've obviously gone into people making some more money being able to get into the home um but what i've found and i think this is what's so valuable about this kind of programming is you know i'm 27 years old there are plenty of people my age and even, uh, you know, a few years older who don't see how this is really going to affect them at all. Let's say first, you don't have a lot of people who are going into buying homes, right? So there's a very large barrier to entry as it stands now. I think mainly because there hasn't been a lot of education uh, at an earlier age regarding, you know, getting credit up, what it means to have to take out debt to purchase something. As far as the, um, you know, automobiles are concerned, a lot of my friends are still going back, and these are people with, you know, jobs who have gone to college and, you know, so on and so forth. And um, they're they're trying to buy cheap cars cash, like just flat cash. Nice, right. It's so yeah. hard for them to get uh, a good a good APR on on vehicles. You know, I mean, you're getting something going up to like 20% for some of these people, and it's uh, it's really tough, I think. And that's probably a much better financial decision anyway in the long term if you can do that. So hopefully it is pushing more people into taking out less debt, right, especially at those types of interest rates and Definitely. saving ahead of time. Um, not everyone's doing that, but that's great. That is great. Uh, the, the mortgage number. So, you know, yields is always what I'm keeping my eye on, man. And it, it is interesting on a longer term basis. You know, we're at some lofty numbers, but we've been at some – Interesting numbers, ridiculous numbers in terms of yields since the financial crisis, right? right? So low for so long that it seems like that's that's changing right now. And we're seeing it change kind of right in front of our eyes and the market kind of struggling a bit as we adjust to that with the Nasdaq now off uh, over 300 points. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to that point as well, 
you know, in my generation, I mean, I grew up in a near zero interest rate environment, right? Uh, so having it now where you're getting this, uh, you know, really high surge in just general Fed funds rates, how that affects everything else, right? And the idea that this might be persistent as time goes on, you had one of the, um, let me see here if I can get the article up. But conversation from some in the Fed, Gov Bowman, that a further rate in increase might be needed. You know, obviously that's going to uh, exacerbate the situation with such high rates, kind of press down these um, these prices in the bonds. So, you know, I, I looking, you know, going forward, how this really impacts uh, the younger generation. It's we're gonna have to wait to see. I mean, are they gonna even? get out there and get a loan or something like that when you have rates so high. I have a feeling this might be out of a lot of their reach. So we'll have to see what it's, comes out with that. It's quite a number on the housing front when you're taking out a 30 year mortgage and you go from three and a half to 7.7. .7. That was the number, 7.7 .7 is what it was, inching towards 8% on a 30 year mortgage. The next interesting part is what happens if we do get that pullback over the next three to five years for housing prices, right? Does that right. Del, you know release a deluge of supply of people that can eventually get out of the house that they we're in for so long, so you inch back towards a 5% mortgage, and you think that's going to allow everybody to buy, but actually it releases like a sale of a supply side. I hear I'm not what you mean. the things I you know, think about, yeah. but everyone's tied up, man. And, and the higher the interest rate goes, the more tied up you are, because why would you sell an interest rate that you got locked in for 30 years as we approach 8% now? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a fascinating situation. And again, I mean, for a long time, we haven't seen something like this. You know, also going with the dollar as well, Obviously, this is depressing a lot in the metal market, in the general stock there, um, in the stock market as well. We're we're really maintaining this very high, uh, you know, above 106 level, right? Yes. You see all today, I mean, we're hitting 107.34. Right now, we're just under that 107 mark. And I think until we see something crack in the dollar, this is going to be, a the market's going to take a beating, essentially. It's a tough one, man, um, you know, and I'm not sure where it finds a bit, especially ahead of the next Fed meeting when they really set the tone and things have really shifted since that Fed meeting almost two weeks ago. Uh, I was right. talking to Kevin Hinks today on my program and I was mentioning, you know, the two year, maybe it was yesterday, you back it up on a 10 day chart, on a 10 minute chart on the Thinkorswim platform and on the two year basis, we kind of had the entire move on Fed day, which was Wednesday, huh. September 20th. The 10 year and the 30 are not the case, man. It is just a marching to lower price, higher yield since there to the tune of almost two full points on the 10 year below where it was on that Wednesday. So longer duration, just a different story right now in terms of yields um, really going higher, man. And I don't know where we end real quick. I've been talking about my program. I know we're coming into the break here. Yeah. But longer term, if you take a look at this 30 year, right, you talked about, you know, you're 27 now. I'm 43. But these are not crazy times when I bring it back to the years of prior to 2008 on the 30 year, Jacob. Yes. We're at like, you know, prices that were pretty high in that time. In 1999, 2000, when I was in college, the 30 year was at 90 trading. It's at 110 right now. That was not Reagan, you know, inflation. Yeah. I was in college. It didn't seem like things were crazy. Meanwhile, yields were much higher than where they are right now. So we'll see, man. Absolutely. Well, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're going to have Basil join us as well. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob and Tommy, and we have Basil on the line as well. Basil, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Jacob? I am doing quite well. Just taking a look at the uh, just the massacre in the market. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So uh, it's interesting you say massacre in the market. Uh, one of the things that we've got to be aware of right now is that it's unusual to have had the dollar rallying this high um, for quite some time. We've had it before, but it's been quite a while. Bond rates, the uh, interest rates, you're talking about them just a moment ago, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but they are really pushing exponentially higher in the short term. Over a period of time, some of us have been here before much, much higher prices, so it's nothing that I'm going to get too excited about. But there are a couple of things that are going on. One is the high that was made in the Dow uh, on the 1st of August at 35,679, <clears throat> that was helping the weekly and the monthly charts get closer and closer to the all-time high of 36,952 made back in January of 2020. And we've plummeted down to 28,660, and we've come back. So what happens in, in October, since September was really a pretty ugly month, what happens in October by the end of the month is going to be really important going into November, and I'll explain why. The, the pattern that we're looking at in the daily chart um, went to a sell. We were fortunate for subscribers to open a call. We shorted the Dow right at the top at, on the 1st of August, and we remain short. But one of the things that I'm looking at, we try, we're trying to, to grab a long position just for, as a trading position, but the core short, I haven't had any uh, desire at this particular time to, to switch that back to long. Meantime, uh, what we're looking at is there's a pattern that I've been discussing for some time, and that is where I use, I call it the indicator of last resort. It's where the nine uh, exponential moving average and the nine period and the 14 period exponential moving average cross positive or negative. And I'd waited and waited. We got a, buy, a sell signal on the Dow based on on, on balance volume and, and, and the inversion of the uh, DOG to the diamonds. Uh, and that worked out fine. But I had to wait for a sell mode in the Dow uh, based on this nine period exponential moving average. But you can see in this chart here, this nine period moving average on the weekly chart has crossed negative 
And that just tells me that we're accelerating to the downside. And if you look at the S&P up until yesterday, the cash S&P did not show an S, meaning the nine went under the 14. And it did that very briefly back in December to January of this past year, into January of this year. This is the first time it's done it. And you can see the distance between the price of the S&P is a closing price so on the Dow, on the S&P. And you can see the nine period. So it's just barely crossed. And you haven't got it yet on the QQQ. And the SMHs, that's the semiconductors, are still holding quite well. I should mention, though, just in terms of our record, we did short the S, the semiconductors uh, two points off the all-time high. That was two days after the actual high was made. Here it is. So these to me are really key indicators because you can see in this weekly chart of the SMHs, the Semiconductor Van Eck ETF, um, it's been underneath the inside track. It was a propellant zone, now it's a repellent zone. So this little mini channel right here says that it's bumping into a lot of resistance. And I always believe that where the semiconductors go, most of the time the general market goes. So I'm watching that very closely. But what I wanted to point out is if the weekly charts by Friday, this coming Friday, if the uh, SMHs, that's the semis, and the, uh, the S&P and the QQQ, the NDX 100, if they close with the pink, with a nine period moving average under the 14 period moving average, wow, that's the first time that that's happened in a long time. Then we'll start to look at the monthly. So just to abbreviate the whole thing, we're looking at sell signals to sell modes in the daily charts, sell signal almost to a sell mode in the weekly charts, but we haven't got there yet. So I'm watching this very closely. And then you were talking about the yields. So look at this, here's the TBT. And as it, look, when I'm looking at the chart, it looks very overbought in the daily chart, leg D in the Chapman wave, leg D, you've got to be a little bit careful. The same thing, breakout down this cup formation in the weekly chart of the TBT, which is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF. And look at the monthly chart, leg E. But wait a minute, I'm going to expand the chart. Here we are, we're going back to 2010. I'll squeeze it again, look at this. I'll squeeze it, oh, it doesn't, this one doesn't go back further. I don't know if the TYX does. So let me just see if the um, uh, TYX.X, if I've got that all notated. Yeah, the TYX goes back. You can see we're up here at 49, it's 4.93% on the 30 year. And if I squeeze this, I used to have it going back years, decades. Well, this is to 1995. 1995, we were up at 70. So you can see that we've been here before. It's the reaction of the market to the conditions. And I think that that's really the story. And the other story that we're looking at here is the home builders, the HGX. This is the Philadelphia, HGX, there we go. HGX is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. And look at this tumble it's taken from this double top. Let me just fix this up in the monthly chart. So 538 was the high in May of 2021. And 575 was the high uh, in going into August of this year. And now we're pulling back. So you can see, if you try to put it into perspective, we've had a spectacular move in the home builders. But so far, the monthly chart says, hey, this is just a, a, a digestive phase. But we've got to be cognizant of a lot of things that are going on here that hadn't gone on before. And I'll show you the same thing in the dollar. Look, the dollar is in leg E in the daily chart and leg B in the month in the weekly chart. And the monthly chart had a high of 140. Well, I should mention we are still long the dollar. 140.78 September of 2022. And it came all the way down to this 200 period exponential moving average support level. Now it's running. So a lot of this if you had to take them separately, they'd be it would be fine. It's the whole thing. So we're putting together a bunch of things where the dollar is streaming to the upside. Gold has taken a huge punch. One of its deepest corrections it's had in a long time. Right. So it's the unusual situation. But if you took them separately, we've seen moves like this in each separate sector before. So I'm saying be cautious. You're going to get really good buying opportunities very soon. Make your list, get it ready, and you can even <laughs> tiptoe into that just a little bit at a time, but that has to be your plan. You don't want to be adding to a losing position. What you want is to be able to ha plan your positions, but I do think that we're getting ready for some decent bounce 
But in the meantime, you've got to be very careful. Cash is, at this point, king. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I'll say in the dollar, too, one of the things I, I think has been hard with it, at least on my end, is it you keep, and this is the way that I'm perceiving it, you keep getting these, like, fake outs a little bit, where it'll pull down, you know, and this is on a two-week chart, and then come right back up, it'll stabilize out, and then pull down again. It's kind of these weird fake outs to where it just goes right up, and I'm, I'm having a hard time but, playing around that, I think. But if you let, have any let me just show you something. Uh, look. When you're looking at the overall monthly chart, look, it's just got these swings. This is just another swing, another digestive phase. So, as I say, I think it's putting the package together. That's what's unusual. But it's separately, we've had, look, there's nothing unusual in the dollar's action so far. Big, a big rally, then it pulls back. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Well, Basil, thank you so much. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob and Tommy. We're about to have Tim Ward on the line, but he's not here yet. In the meantime, I want to take a look uh, quickly at Steel Dynamics, I speak about this all the time. Let me put it on the monthly. Nope, oh, I think we might have Tim Ward. Tim, are you there? Hello. Hey, I Tim, am. how you doing? I, pretty good, guy. Uh, I'm, I'm here, so. Um, and you're with uh, Jacob and Tommy as well, Tim. So what are we looking at Welcome, today? Welcome, Tim. Good to talk to you, man. Yeah, good to talk to you. We got all three of us on, huh? That's right. <laughs> That's right. 
So, um, all right. Um, actually, we can start on chart one if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get over to that right now. Or, um, all right. So we're looking at the SPX on chart one. Yeah, chart one. Um, actually, the first thing I want to discuss, uh, we were up five months in a row going into July, which is a second window up from the bottom. And uh, this is kind of a momentum study. It's uh, go back and do this uh, in a nutshell. When you're up five minutes a row, in a row, that's never the final high. There's at least, at a minimum, one more new high, if not multiple new highs. So it's, it's a momentum uh, type, um, I forget what you call it, uh, uh, but anyhow, it's, it's a momentum study. The last time we did this was back in 2020. You're up uh, five months in a row. I got it circled in blue on the volume chart. Went down two months. Then you started making higher highs. We got a kind of a similar thing here uh, going. So ultimately, we're going to hit a new high. If we're going to just hit one month new high or multiple new highs, it's unknown. But I think the, the pattern that is forming here uh, is the head and shoulders bottom. And we're currently... Um, messing around on the right shoulder right now. And we have support on the SPX around uh, uh, 4,200, uh, which is basically the previous highs of that solidation that started in April of 2022 and went into, um, you know, April, May of 2023. So we're sitting on top of that support zone right now. And a lot of times on head and shoulders uh, patterns, there's a lot of... Um, um, similarities or rhymes. In other words, if the left shoulder should rhyme with the right shoulder, in other words, the price highs and price lows should be about the same, and the number of, of the time sequence of the left shoulder should approximate to, uh, to the time sequence of the right sh uh, shoulder. And we're probably about done with this. So on a bigger time frame, I think we're setting that support and the right shoulder is forming here. And so... Uh, ultimately, we're going to hit a new high uh, at some point in the next, I think probably this month, but we'll wait and see. But uh, flip to uh, chart two. All right, we got it up, the VIX. Yeah, it's a VIX. And uh, I showed this chart uh, last week uh, with with Tom. I talked about a little bit about it. And uh, it's, it's actually, uh, it measures the momentum of the VIX. Uh, so the faster the VIX goes up, the more panic is because, you know, VIX is called uh, a fear gauge. And so when fear is, is around, VIX rises. And so I, I looked at it a different way. I, I look at the acceleration of the VIX, how fast fear rises. And the faster fear rises, it's kind of like the exit door. The faster it goes uh, to people trying to get out of the exit, uh, the more... Uh, closer to, I, I guess, a bottom you might see. So anyhow, I got uh, kind of a momentum indicators on the VIX. The bottom one is the RSI. Next one up uh, from the bottom is the uh, uh, two-period rate of change. That's the ROC. And the next one up is a percent uh, B, which is basically when you're at one, you're hitting the upper Bollinger Band. When you're at zero, you're hitting the lower Bollinger Band. When it's at 50, you're at the mid Bollinger Band. And to really uh, uh, find out how this indicator works, you need two of the three, or preferably all three of them, to hit in bullish uh, regions. Well, last week we hit in two of the regions. Now, the market's gone a little bit lower, but it did pick out that low last week. Now we're doing back down to a retest. But I still think... We're probably at some sore important low here because red support, which is previous highs around that on the SPYs around the 4200, uh, and we had a a decent um, 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 you know a kind of a acceleration in the VIX. So I think some sort of a low is being formed here. Um, I'm probably going pretty fast here, but we can uh, no, go to chart great, three. Go for it. And you can kind of see where that support lies. And the the, uh, the second window up from the bottom is the 10-day average of the trend. I always said uh, readings around 1.2 are usually where that's where panic forms uh, on a trend, anything uh, at 1.2 or higher. 
Uh, but if you get a 10 day, you basically got two weeks of panic. And that's usually uh, good enough uh, to form a worthwhile low. Uh, the previous times, I marked it with uh, pink areas every time the 10 day trend got to 1.2 or higher. And you know, the album came at near lows here. So we got the makings of a bottom in this vicinity. And I said once before, I thought we may not reach 120 or, or 20 or 40 or 420 or 4200 on the SPX, 420 on the SPYs. And I didn't, because we had quite a bit of panic at a little bit higher level, but we did get down to 420. We're sitting in that region right now. And um, uh, so we did get to uh, 1.2 on the 10 day trend, or actually 1.19. I think that's close enough. The blue lines going across the chart are showing times when the RSI of the SPX have reached below 30 as of today, and you know, we're at 29.21. So we got an RSI uh, on the uh, SPYs along with the 10-day trend around 1.2. So we're in an important area, red support. Um, actually, a little bit of surprise today was a down day, but a lot of times the market will do just something one more day down to kind of knock you out. But in my opinion... Uh, we're making a low in this vicinity. Um, I thought September could be an up month. I, I think this is just an ABC down. If you look at the high of, of August down to the current low, in my opinion, we're probably just doing an ABC down. And uh, we got panic uh, in the VIX, and we got a little panic in the trends, and we're near support. Could it go a little bit below support? Usually it, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But... Uh, we got quite a few things popping up here. I think uh, ultimately we're going to hit a new high because of uh, the momentum indicator on, on uh, chart one, five months up in a row, predict the market will be at least one more new high. So I'm, I'm not really f afraid of the downtrend here starting. I'm trying to figure out exactly what day is the low. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Do you have some questions or anything? Tim, I tell you, can I jump in, Jay? I was just yep. just just thinking about it as you're talking about it, Tim. We've been talking about yields a, a lot. Do you, do you look at yields? Do you have an expectation? Are we going to see a, a little bit of a re reversal um, on those yields potentially, if that's the market action, or is that just a separate issue? Or how do you do? You, do you look at those numbers? Maybe we can uh, hang actually, during the break. I do have an indicator on that, and I, I, I see yields been going up. Um, I, I see. I hear your phone, or I, I hear your music, so we can. Yeah, we can wait until we get back from the break. That'd be great. Wonderful. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tommy O'Brien and Tim Ord. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We are with Tim Ord. Tim, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. And Tommy, you had a question for Tim before we went to the break. So, Tim, you were just talking about yields. I'm just, you know, of course, like most people, I'm sure, yields are, are driving some of this action and, and was wondering what you think about yields, if this might be a little bit of an area that we get the market to trade topside and, and what you're looking for, if anything, from yields. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just sent over a chart, uh, SPX tilt, T-I-L-T, or T-L-T. Um, uh, did you have a chance? To, uh, I just sent it over an email to, to Tommy, you, and um, Jacob taking a look right now okay i'm taking a look at it i don't have it yet but i will take a look at it maybe you have it, jacob uh, or maybe it's coming yeah i think yep, it i got it right here uh give me a second Let's see if i can pull it up in here yep and i i have it as well let's see Well, here, I can just blow it up within. I've got it up, Tim. Here, Go I for have, it. I can, yeah, I have it as well. You got well. it, Jacob? Yep. Okay, perfect. We got it up. Go for it, Tim. All right. Well, anyhow, it's uh, the bottom window is 20-year treasury, which is the TLT. Next uh, uh, next one up is just the daily SPX. Then, uh, then I did a S SPX tilt ratio, uh, trying to figure out, you know, if, if it's you know, if, 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 there, if there's any news there or any information that is worthwhile, what I found out was, in general, when the RSI, which is the top window of that ratio, SPX-TLT ratio, it gets up around 70 or higher. Usually, you got a little short-term high. And currently, uh, I just sent this over at, uh, I can't quite, it looks like about 56, 57, so... It's not really saying a whole lot as far as this ratio goes, but when it gets down, RSI gets down below 30, a lot of times you're setting at a low, which are the um, uh, red times, and uh, the blue arrows are when the RSI is up around 70, that's usually a high. So it kind of picked out the high in August there and, and actually had a little high in June, not, nothing real significant, and you had some highs back in February and stuff, but right now it's kind of in limbo. It's not saying a whole lot, uh, even though the tilt's been going down here. Um, it's not, it's, it hasn't reached any extremes that suggest it's going to uh, produce anything in the market as far as a reversal, either up or down. So I'm kind of reading that. So we need to really get above 70 plus to really suggest that market high may occur. But, um, not a lot of information, you know. If you, if you look at it in general, you know the the this ratio SPX tilt ratio kind of trends with the market. I mean, even though uh, you know it, it get a uh, it started a rally in basically March, and uh, now the S and P's been correcting uh, since August, and this ratio's kind of still been going higher. I don't know if that could mean an intermediate term bullish sign, but in general, you know, I really doesn't really say a whole lot. So I'll put it that way. Not enough information for me to make a judgment on it. So, but um, we, we I can appreciate put it. To, uh, 
Number, I was just going to uh, say yields are a tough forward. one. I appreciate it. It's a, everyone's interested where they're going, um, and and maybe the market just marches higher without a huge adjustment on yields. We'll see. Yeah, that's, um, I, I don't know yet. You know, it hasn't seems like this this ratio SPX when it reaches extremes, either up or down, goes up down too fast, or or, or goes up too fast or down too fast. That's when usually reversals of some sort happen in the SPX, and so far. Um, it hasn't really said anything, so maybe it'll say something here in the next couple of days. Don't know, but as of today, it's not saying much. So um, let's flip to chart four. I have it right here. All right, uh, chart four. I've been showing this thing for the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is a long-term chart of the it's a weekly bullish percent index slash GDX ratio, and every time this ratio got below. Um, uh, money, uh, uh, minus or twenty less than twenty five, you're setting at a minute term low, and I circled the times when the market actually it was setting at a low, but it more or less flipped sideways. And if you look on the GD, uh, GDX chart, which is basically the middle chart, it's a weekly GDX chart. Uh, we flipped uh, this ratio. Uh, gave a bullish signal back in uh, mid-2015, and it flipped sideways for several months before the rally began. We had another signal in late 2021, circled in red, and it flipped sideways for several months before the rally began. The last signal, uh, or we had another signal in mid-2022, it went down a little bit over the next few months or the uh, next few weeks before the rally began. And this signal was generated on August 28th of 2000, so a couple, or September 1st, so about a month, month and a half ago. And it's still gone down some. So uh, is this signal failing, or is this kind of a normal procedure? Sometimes it reverses right on the money. Sometimes it flips sideways to down a little bit before the rally begins. Well, let's flip to chart number five to see actually where we are. So this this chart gave a... Uh, August, or actually September 1st, it gave a buy signal. Uh, this chart looks at the short-term picture of, of what GDX is doing. And on the bottom window is the up-down volume uh, with an 18-day average, and it's up-down volume for GDX. Next window higher is advanced decline uh, for GDX with an 18-day average. And the blue areas are, are times when both those indicators are above minus 10, and the pink areas are times when both those indicators are below minus 10. And so we've kind of been flipping, you know, blue and pink over here, over, actually over the, since pretty much all year. Uh, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down. And we're basically all the way back to May of, uh, or March of this, this year. And we're kind of testing that area. We're actually a little bit below it. And if you look uh, at where our, when I did this chart earlier today, now the minus 10 on both indicators is kind of the key area. If you're above minus 10, it means the, the uptrend has started in GDX. When it's below minus 10, then a decline has started in GDX. And uh, as of the time I sent this chart over, the bottom window is, uh, or the bottom indicator is a point, or is minus 8. And the next indicator up is a minus nine and a half. So we're basically at minus 10 on both of them, just actually a hair above it. Uh, so if that holds that level, it needs to hold that level and stay above minus 10 to say the rally is starting. So, well, you know, Tom and I have been talking about it. I'm thinking, you know, the rally is starting here in September. Well, it went up and went back down again. But ultimately, because of, of uh, chart four, if you go back to chart four, at some point, we're going to start a rally. It's going to stick, according to that chart four rally, or to, to chart four, which is that uh, weekly bullish percent index slash GDX ratio, because the RSI is below minus 25. So, is this the one that starts and keeps going, or will it turn blue for a little short while and turn back to to pink again? I don't know. Um, it could, it couldn't, but if you notice, we're also making higher lows on both those indicators where GDX is making lower lows, and I pointed out those times in the past when that has happened. So we have a positive divergence here. So I hear your music. 
so. Yeah, Tim, thank you so much. I mean, fascinating as always, and it's always great to have you on. Folks, if you want to get in contact with Tim or see what he's about, he's at the Ord-Oracle.com. That is Ord-Oracle.com. Tim, thank, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. me on. Absolutely. See you next yep. time, Tim. Folks, stay tuned. Right. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob and Tommy filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, before we finish up the show here, I want to take a look over here. This is on the TFNN front page. We have a new host. His name is Peter Bruno. He's on from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. He's been awesome to work with, and uh, he is getting the hang of TFNN uh, pretty quickly. And I think his show is chalking up to be something pretty uh, special. So, again, that's 2 to 3 p.m. right before this show segment, and we really recommend you guys get in there, say hi to Peter, ask him questions, and uh, all that good stuff that you're familiar with at TFNN. Hey, Jacob, I wanted to ask you real quick, uh, Bitcoin, did, did, are you still interested in Bitcoin? Any of your friends still interested in Bitcoin? I myself have found myself to be much less interested in Bitcoin recently <laughs> as opposed to recent years. I'm wondering if that's just myself or if crypto, um, FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF, he's in the press, of course, recently as that's beginning. Um, but but how, how, how is that going in terms of people that you're around with, people in their 20s? Um, how is crypto, man, with Bitcoin? you know, not as volatile as it had been, to put it lightly. Yeah, you know, I'll say there's there's always been a um, pretty zealot group uh, that is still pretty strong on it, but the general conversation, you know, I'd say a few years ago, especially in 2020, you know, you had a bunch of conversation around Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
even, you know, Dogecoin being as silly as that kind of is, that general interest has pretty much petered out. I will say, though, that the folks that I know who are just very strongly for Bitcoin still see it moving. Um, you know, I have some friends who have been compensated for their work in Bitcoin, and this has been a really rough time for them uh, in the, in the you know, yeah. past few years. So, Sure. Cool. The I'm way just interested. I and yet, it's, you know, I'm just interested because maybe that is the lull before um, the acceleration needs. Everyone loses interest. You know, I find myself yeah. saying maybe nobody's talking about it. It's sitting at 27,000 and I know people are talking about it. This year has been quite a run for Bitcoin as well, but not versus some of those previous years. Anyway, I Absolutely. appreciate the input, man. Oh, definitely. You know, and I'll say too, I, we're going to wrap up here, but um, someone, the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, Someone has uh, got onto his Twitter account somehow, maybe it is him, and is uh, stoking some interest in it. So something to keep a look at regarding the price. We're living in a movie, man. Why I know. Not, right? <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. It has been a great time. Tommy, or excuse me, Tom O'Brien will be back tomorrow. Tommy's on at 9 a.m. See you soon. Thanks, Jacob.